Hi, I'm Daniel Miller from Mute. I'm here with Future Music to talk about the label and our new studio called Studio Mute, which has uh, a lot of very nice, interesting stuff in it to make music with. One of the things that's really important about the studios that we've been associated with over the years and, and this studio now is that is to try and build a space where it's kind of collaborative, where it feels like a nice place to be, comfortable. We try and keep the equipment level as high as possible without pricing ourselves out of the out of the market or out of the market that we're in. Um, I, I just think, yeah, and you know, we ha we thought a lot about how this this studio was going to be laid out, about how the equipment was going to be laid out. You know, we have quite a few vintage veteran heritage synths, whatever you want to call them, plus some obviously the modern equipment as well, and. For me, the, one of the most frustrating things is when you're in a studio with a few synths around or a laptop or whatever and things aren't properly plugged in and somebody's crawling around on the floor trying to figure out how to plug something in. It really, you know, so one of the most, one of the important parts of making this studio work, especially from the electronics side, was to make a really good workflow, to make sure that the workflow was smooth and creative and not too many interruptions. So everything's patchable, everything's patched in, whether it's MIDI, CV, clocks, um, DIN, you know, DIN sync, whatever is required, it's all available instant, instantaneously, all the synths coming up on the patch bay. Um, so, the, you know, trying to keep things, kind of trying to keep the workflow, the creative uh, flow as, uh, as good as possible. I should just tell you that I'm not a studio engineer. Um, fortu I'm fortunate enough to work with some really good engineers, but I don't know the, all the technical details about the desk and about some of the outboard, but we'd spent a lot of time thinking about what kind of desk we were going to have in the mid, you know, 2014s. You know, we used to have some great uh, Amac desks back in the Harrow Road back in the day, which we loved, but felt that they weren't really kind of suited to the way we wanted to work going forward in terms of space and just in terms, you know, we didn't need that kind of facility anymore. And there were some interesting other possibilities you know to integrate with the software and so forth and we anyway we arrived at getting the decision was to get the Southern State Logic uh, matrix desk which I'm really happy with it's very good to work with very flexible I don't personally operate it that much but I, I enjoy working with it and we use Pro Tools as our main DAW although personally I, I use Ableton Live which I love uh, along with the Ableton Push which is a great piece of hardware and so um, I mean, here we have Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, but people tend to end up mixing from uh, from Pro Tools. Yeah, some interesting stuff down here. There's a Moog phaser, which is super spacey and um, you know, really rich, resonant sounding, great phaser. I really love, my favourite though, is this uh, MXR pitch transposer, which has four, you, know, you can set four presets up on the buttons and then you can just press them and go through the different presets to get weird got a very weird sound it's not you know there's nothing authentic about it whatsoever so that's good it's got you know lots of feedback and you just get yeah really nice I think I've had that since like 1979 um, bought second hand off this guy who was selling stuff off I mean that was the thing in those days you, you know people there's a really good second hand market there probably is now as well but there's a really good second hand market for people like me who can couldn't anywhere near afford of any, any of this stuff new, so it was great. Yeah, this is a piano. I don't know if you've seen one of these before. Really quite a nice looking thing. Very musical. This actually was uh, used to be in our, the offices of our publishing company, which is just across the road, but we thought we'd uh, put it to better use in the studio. But when it was in our offices, uh, we publish artists like Nick Cave and Polly Scattergood. And they all used to play on it when they came to visit us in the publishing company. It's great. I think Nick even wrote some songs on here. So it's got a nice history to it. Sounds pretty good too. Sounds very good, in fact. Some of these, some of these synths have got a bit of a history to them. Um, well, we've got classic 909 drum machine, Roland classic 808, both of w and the 303 bass line, Acid House, all of which have been in sort of in our studios for many, many, many years, all work really well, all sound amazing. Um, this is a Mini Moog, some of you will recognise. Actually used to belong to Gary Newman, still got the original flight case somewhere. 
so that's really nice. Um, this is a Pro One Profit monophonic synth, amazing sound. This used to belong to the keyboard player with Fad Gadget. Um, I'll turn it down. There we go. That sounds great. I'll just this is um, this is a Russian. This is a Polyvox Russian um, Soviet era synth. There's a band on mute uh, called Night Sareb, great band, and they played quite a lot in the old Soviet Union back in the day. And they um, they came back they came back from one of their tours there, and they said, and, the, and one of the guys said, "Look, do you want to?" There's a guy in Russia who we met in Siberia actually, who would swap a Polyvox for a DX7. So I said, no problem at all. So the next time they went on tour, they took the DX7 out with them and brought this back, which is actually a far more interesting synthesizer than the DX7, in my opinion. Uh, got a filter that distorts in a really interesting way. So that's the Polyvox. This is, a, this is more recent. This is a drum, a drum module, a Russian drum module. I'd rather you didn't ask me what it was called because I'm afraid I can't read the language. But it's basically a triggerable drum module. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six drums. Sounds inc incredible. Doesn't sound like anything else at all. Quite often trigger it from here, from the uh, trigger outputs from the 808 or 909. So you can program it from here, but you get the Russian sounds. Um, this is an ARP sequencer, which is... We are fortunate enough to have a couple of these. I've got a couple of my, at my studio at home. This, this, is, this was kind of at the heart of our, a lot of the work we did in the sort of early 80s, early, well, still is actually, but especially then when we had this and an, ARP, an old ARP 2600, which I still have, but it's not here, which was owned, originally owned by Elton John. So there's a lot of, but this is, we used this to pretty much make, especially on like the early Depeche records, Fad Gadget records, Silicon Teens records, this was used to pretty much do all the rhythmic work, all the bass lines, a lot of this sort of percussive effects. We used to sync it to tape. We figured out how to sync it to tape so we could do sequenced overdubs. That, and this is like one of the, my favorite tools in all the synth world that exists because it's only 16 steps and it's just really perfect, minimal uh, kind of tool to create such incredible sounds using not just to control pitch, but filters. You've got the rhythmic controls here. Love it. Anyway, love it. This is a Roland System 100M modular. Very nice sounding. Um, you know, all the usual things, oscillators, filters, VCAs, and other sequences are here. Very nice sequencer. Envelope generators, phasers, equalizers. We use that very much in conjunction with this, but also with other things as well. Um, one of my favorites. The EMS vocoder, 2000 sounds. There are a lot of digital vocoders out there. Just don't cut it when it comes to vocoders. You've got, you know, it's an an this, the analog sound on here is just very robotic indeed. It's not so much. It's more craft work than ELO, I would say. Um, this is a kind of Moogie-ish SE1 synth. I love this little. It's quite a modern little modular synth called a Tiny Sizer. It's like a portable modular synth. It really appeals to my sense of portability. It's got tiny little cables, but it's, once you get your head around it, it's really flexible. You get some great sounds. It's also got MIDI in. Very flexible. You can very easy to hook up with other modular synths through these inputs here. That's really great. What else can I tell you? Um, yeah, I mean, walled off, walled off. Um, Wave down here, mother wave table synth, no behind matrix uh, thousand, and Arturia. I mean, if you can't make a great sound with this lot, you know, you shouldn't. Uh, you should have to work. You should have to try harder. I would say.